A plus focus. This month we will be learning about safer places to play and being a good citizen. Safer places to play. Some places are safer to play than others. Your own garden or your friend's garden without any passing traffic. Somewhere where whoever is looking after you can see you. Parks are great places to play. Most parks have a lot, lots of grassy area where you can play. Football pitches are great for all kinds of games as there is lots of space. But that doesn't mean they're always safe. Check who is already in there or who is passing. Do you feel safe? Check play equipment is safe before you go on. Wouldn't you, you wouldn't like to slide, slide down a slide and find your poo at the bottom of and can't stop. adult where you are going, who you are going with and what time you will be back. Have fun, choose a safe place to play. Being a good citizen. To be a good citizen you should respect other people, be well mannered, courteous and polite, be helpful, considerate, honest and trustworthy, listen to others views and opinions as, they, as you might actually think that they could they're better than yours. Be able to control your behaviour, even when upset or angry. Take responsibility for your actions. Say sorry if you need to. Report bullying. Be a good model to be a good role model to those who look up to you. Respecting rights of others. Everybody has a duty to look after their community by recycling waste materials, never dropping litter, being a good neighbour, following rules and laws. By, by being a good citizen, everyone can make a difference and help to inspire others. Obviously, due to COVID, you may not be able to be with as many people as you would like. The rule of six or two households. These are in place to, to keep you safe, uh, to keep you and everyone else safe. Um, this could include your family, friends, and your close ones. To stop COVID, um, and this is so we can get back to normal. I'm sure lots of you have uh, fr friends and family who may maybe aren't, you can't hold in place at the moment. Now, I hope you enjoyed our assembly for today. Um, and we'll see you next month, hopefully, with an another competition for you. Bye. Bye. Good morning and welcome to our assembly for today. So I've got something that I need you to do to get involved in the assembly today. Um, put your hand up if you are the first person in the register when your teacher calls the register out. Okay, brilliant. Uh, put your hand up if you are the second person. Okay, and put your hand up if you are the third, fourth, and fifth people. So we should have person one, person two, and then person three, four, and five. Okay, what we're gonna do is a little bit of experiments. What I want you to do, if you're person one, is you are going to clap at as much as you can to make as loud a noise as you can. Just person one. Okay, ready, steady, go, clap. Stop. Okay, loud. Not very loud. Let's see if we can do it with person one and person two. So person one and person two clap together at the same time and we're going to see who is loudest. Okay. Is it going to be person one on their own or one and two together? Okay. Ready? Clap. Stop. Right. This time. So we've done person one on their own. Then we did person two. So it was much louder with two people together. So this time I want person three four and five to join in. So we should have five people clapping. Ready? Get ready with persons. Um, one, two, three, four, five, all clapping together. Clap. Stop. Right. Was that louder with just person one, just the first person in the register, or with all five people? It was louder with all five people, wasn't it? 
But what happens if the whole class joins in? Are you ready? Everybody get ready to clap. But when I say stop, you've got to stop dead. Fold your arms. Okay, ready? Everybody together. Clap. And stop. Fold your arms. Well done. So we're much louder, you're much louder when you're together than when you are on your own. And at school, we've got loads of things that we can do on our own. We can read, we can write stories, we can do our maths, we can do all sorts of things on our own. But sometimes we have to work with other people. We have to work in pairs or small groups. We might be making a poster, we might be uh, doing some artwork, or it might just be that we're working with other people because it's good to work with other people. And then we might be part of a large team, it might be uh, a rounders team, it might be playing instruments or something. And these large groups mean that everybody has to work together so they can achieve their goal together, just like the adults in the school. Sometimes all come together and we work together as a team. So today we're going to think about teams and teamwork. Okay, now being able to work on your own is important. It's a skill that we practice a lot at school, but working as a team means that we have to use different skills. So can anybody think about what the word unity means? Difficult word, that one, unity. Now, the dictionary tells us that unity is being united or joined together as a whole. And this is a great definition of working together. Uh, so a choir that is joined as a whole means that the voices blend to create harmony. Players in a sports team know that if they are united, they know that each, what each one is going to do without needing to shout instructions to the other. Now, there's a line in the Bible that says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for people to dwell together in unity. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Now, two words in that passage that we don't hear very much um, at the moment, uh, nowadays is behold. And um, my uh, gran used to say behold, meaning that she was very impressed. Behold, look at this amazing or behold this amazing work that these children have brought me or whatever. Behold. And the other one is blessed. Now, it generally means something um, is something good. So you might say a person is blessed with a great singing voice. So the Bible is saying that it's really good when people come together to do things together. And particularly when people live together in unity or looking after the environment or looking after Wincham or being together in a classroom and all learning the same thing at the same time. So the Bible's uh, saying that's good, but unity, being together like that, doesn't happen naturally. It's something we need to work at. So a choir that's full of blessed singers, so that's full of people who are really good at singing, doesn't necessarily mean they sound, to get, sound good when they sing together. They've got to work at it in practice. They need to listen out for each other, making sure that, that one voice isn't louder than the others. A football team that's full of blessed footballers, that's full of really good footballers, isn't any good unless they can play together, unless they know how each other is going to react. So you've got to learn the skill of teamwork. Now, there's an animal that knows the skill of teamwork. That's going to be important in what we, uh, we do with our teamwork information this week. So that animal um, is one that feels at home in a large group, and that is the humble sheep. Okay, Sheep and shepherds are mentioned in the Bible over 200 times, and we can learn a lot about the sheep from the sheep about teams and teamwork. So I'm going to show you a bit of a story that involves a sheep from this, and this story is taken from the Bible. So watch the story.
Now, in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, Jesus told this parable, this story, emphasizing how important each person is to God. God is like a great shepherd who cares for all of his sheep. And the parable is also a great example of what we need in order to be a good team. A good team shows concern for each other, like God demonstrating his concern for us. For example, when your teacher is marking your maths work and discover that you haven't quite got it, you haven't quite understood it, they can help you and point you in the right direction. Another example is if a friend is behaving badly and is doing something you know is wrong, making the wrong decisions with their behaviour, it's up to us as a team to say, look, come on, sort it out. Don't do that and remind them of the right way to behave. Now, we might do this by being a good example and, set, and doing the right things ourselves or reminding them of the right way to behave. If any of us were lost, we'd want our team, our friends, our teachers to come and find us, whether it's actually lost because we don't know where we are or lost with the wrong behaviour choices or lost with our work and not knowing how to how to do our work. So let's have a think. How would you show concern for your friends? Have a think. What would you do to help your friends show concern for your friends? Okay, tell your teacher, tell your adult you, that you're watching this with. And now you've done that, have a think about a time when your friends have showed concern for you. Okay, what's somebody done for you that's helped out, that's made you feel part of a team? What's somebody done that's made you feel part of a team? Okay, so today we're thankful for the team that's our school community. I hope that we can show concern for our friends and other team members, just as the shepherd showed his concern for the sheep in the parable. Have a lovely rest of the day, guys. Use those really good teamwork skills. I'll see you around school. Bye-bye.